Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are Mira Kim and Carrie Boston from Red Cedar Chamber. Nice to have you both here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, I got a, a series of concerts. Actually, you're kind of in the middle of it. Uh, you've done a little bit and have a little bit more to come in the current concert series. Yeah. And uh, this is surrounding the Brinton material. Which, if anyone who's been on, listening to the Culture Crawl or has uh, seen Red Cedar any time in the last several years, knows about the uh, Brinton collection. And so, before we talk about Brinton, surprise, surprise! Um, for those who may not be familiar, uh, give me the little thumbnail sketch of the history of these early, early moving images. Well, the Brinton collection um, of entertaining, early entertaining materials is at the University of Iowa Special Collections. Um, and it was discovered uh, in Washington, Iowa. Frank Brinton was, uh, was from Washington, Iowa, and he was actually the founding, uh, he was the director of the the Washington State Theater, what was then the Graham Opera House. And he was he was on the forefront of showing early films, transitioning from, from entertainment like vaudeville style with magic lantern slides and sing-alongs and narrations to early silent films with music and everything. Um, and he, he um, had a long career um, entertaining. He was, they were incredibly successful, the highest paid people in, in Iowa. And he was the, the uh, manager of the Washington State Theater, which is the longest running movie theater in the world, the longest continuously operating movie theater in the world. And you know, he was the first director. So at any rate, um, he died and um, his wife, Indiana, who traveled with him, um, they stored all of this, all of their papers and all of their early films and all of their Magic Lantern slides and materials in the basement. And then Indiana died, <laughs> and the executor of her estate stored him in his basement. And then he died. <laughs> <laughs> and the and family his was son to, yeah. was like, <laughs> clean you know, up. What are all these boxes in the basement marked Brinton crap? It's and, <laughs> and, okay, and it's like, what are we going to do with great grandma's ashes? Like, yeah. you know, you know? Rescue all these boxes. And just so happened that Michael Zaz, the wonderful um, junior high biology and history teacher, who is a, just a folk hero in, uh, in Washington, um, County. county happened by and the son of the executor this is like 1981 and the son of the executor said, what am I do with all this stuff and Michael said oh I'll take it <laughs> and so he tr two truckloads of this stuff and he realized that he had um, there were a lot of film reels and that he couldn't really do anything with them because you know they were um, First of all, they would blow up, but second of all, they were significant. He knew he had something significant. So he sent them to the Library of Congress, and the Library of Congress duplicated some of them. And of course, they duplicated them onto 35 millimeter film, and they were in black and white. And then um, Michael started showing these films um, at the Ainsworth Opera House every year, his, his Brinton Silent Film Festival. Um, but without any accompaniment, he would just narrate, and he's great at it. I mean, they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. But no one ever really paid any attention to this collection for, for Decades. 30 years. And so finally, Humanities, of, Humanities Iowa and the University of Iowa Spectral Collections kind of, he got their attention somehow. And of course, the technology has improved so much. So all of a sudden, this project that, that we had heard about, this collection that we had at Red Cedar had all heard about, all of a sudden, something was, there was attention paid to it. So then we decided to do the first concert project. Right at the beginning, in 2013, we decided, OK, we can do this. And, and two years later, we, we actually re-premiered all these, all these incredible films with chamber music, as they were, would have been presented originally. Um, generally, the collection, I mean, they, the, the, the collection is of international significance. It has, um, I mean, it's very, very large. It has thousands of magic lantern slides. And it has, um, has many, many hours of film, uh, some of which is very rare, and some of which is unique in the world. Georges uh, Méliès is uh, uh, famous from the movie Hugo. He was in that. But, but he was an incredible early filmmaker that actually got frustrated um, and, burned. and burned everything. 
in part way through his career. And then he, he started selling toys at the Mont Montparnasse train station. And that's where the movie Hugo is, um, is set. But he, uh, Brinton had purchased some of his films and there they were in a shed in Iowa, ready to blow up, and <laughs> you know, catch fire and right and, silver and nitrate, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, but th so it turns out the collection has two, if not three. Well, they're still working uh, to verify, not sure. but a, uh, at least two of the only copy of these Melies films in the world. And so it's a, it's a big deal. Like in Italy, they had thousands of people <laughs> for the yeah. Re in America, re people were like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the Ainsworth Opera House. But yeah. me, meanwhile, in Italy, it they you were know, going attracts wild. thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's kind of just culture <laughs> in a nutshell. So right at any there. rate, it's an incredible collection, that, which, is, which is one of the more used collections at the University of Iowa Special Collections. And, and it's so rich, and the stories are so rich, and so fascinating how early film developed and the imagination and the inventiveness that it took. Um, well, and even the films that, you know, were of fairly mundane things, but they were scenes from Paris or Italy. And imagine for just a moment, you know, it's the it's the turn of the last century. And, you know, people didn't people have never yet, pe had an people never never to... saw what a Paris street looked like or an exotic animal or I mean, or any of these things or some incredible performances. So a lot of it was documentary and that sort of thing. So at any rate, we have a quite a mix of films, uh, a lot of lot of different things, and you know this is our third time around with this. We did uh, well. We, Mary, you tell them about the well, first project. Well, so um, Jan Boland and John Dowdall, the founders of Red Cedar Chamber Music, uh, before they retired, they did a couple projects using these materials, and their thought was, why not present them with live music as they would have been back in the day. And of course, back in the day, sometimes it was a lone guitarist or a single pianist. You know, there, or a there, full orchestra. Yeah, there might have been a yeah. band, a full band, but, but of course, uh, Jan and John curated from the known repertoire to be able to accompany films, and then commissioned works as well to be made specifically for the films that were chosen. And so it really provides this impact. You know, it's, it's funny because you can watch a film, however long it be, three, 30 seconds or three minutes, and silently, yes, it's interesting. <laughs> but as soon as you add the music, the emotional impact is so heightened. Whatever's happy is happier. What's funny is funnier. What's uh, sad is sadder. It's, it's really interesting um, to see that and experience it. Um, and then... After the initial program that they did in 2015, uh, they, they came back in 2016 with Music and Magic Lanterns. So this did not have the moving pictures, but the Magic Lantern slides uh, with musical accompaniment. And for this program, Brinton Surprise, we've got films that our audiences have not seen yet. We've got new commissions. I mean, for, the, for all the Brinton projects, we have commissioned 10 new works and seven of them will be on this program. Um, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful combination of things taking us through, uh, well. Through this, how, how Brinton used the slides, um, what the different kinds of films are, the comedy, the, the documentary, the narrative films, what the innovative special effects and the magical effects uh, were, and who the characters are, because the collection has most of the major filmmakers. It has it has Méliès, it has Edison, it has Lubin, it has Pathé, it has Chamon. It, it, all of these early, famous, famous early filmmakers who who, who created the industry um, are represented in the collection. So we've really got a little bit of everything and. We've put it together to tell a story, not only to tell Frank Brinton's story, but all of, also Melies' story. There's a major commission which includes those two one-of-a-kind-in-the-world films by Melies, a third Melies film, and then a great example of a knockoff. What actually killed Melies in the end what, <laughs> was what, the knockoffs. Was all the knockoffs. He couldn't, because <laughs> like, you know, he couldn't copyright anything, so he was, did all these great things, and then the big studios would rob him blind. Um, and it's a, it's a four-film uh, 
work. It's about 10 minutes long. It was written by Jean-Francois Charles at the, at the University of Iowa and his friend in France. And they're both Méliès, Knotts, and... Um, they uh, jumped at the opportunity. They jumped at the opportunity and created... It's like a story within the story. It's, it's, um, so uh, it, tells, it tells Frank Britton's story and it tells the story of early film, but also um, the story is told by Michael Saws, who we all are familiar with from the Saving Brinton documentary, which started because this, you know, this project started and they were like, wow, this is going to be really cool. We'll follow you. Um, so um, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, I, it's just endlessly entertaining, but also learning so much about, about the history of it all. Did, so. did you ever think when you were, you know, as, as, as musicians plying your career that you would be coming back time and time again to s playing for silent movies? Well, I, I mean... We just joked the other day. We were saying how symphonies, major symphonies, are all doing these movie nights, right, where they accompany an entire yeah, movie. Yeah. And I was Frozen. saying, I was saying, oh, you oh know, yeah, that's, same thing. Same yeah, exact well, thing. I was saying that's hard work. You know, I don't know if I'm into that. He's like, what do you think we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this no, is I, harder work. This, this is, is more exact. More we exactly. try to get the timings perfect, like when someone falls into the water or when someone's stabbing the door or whatever. Yeah. There are sound effects that go with those, and so we study the films, and <laughs> we have our cues, and we're really trying to nail but, it. But actually, in the, in, the, in the heyday of silent films, every little opera house had their own band, and the primary occupation for musicians was accompanying, was, was accompanying Yes. films of accompanying these shows so so it, it, it's appropriate you know so britain surprise is you're kind of in the midst of it or just getting, well, started, just getting started now yeah. and so there are going to be several concerts in a variety of locations so lots of opportunities to see this concerts, Yikes, 15 th three three music for seniors we have three rural outreach sponsored by the nea um also the cedar rapids public library um and the we were going to do the Marion Public yeah, Library. Yeah, we were going to be at Marion, Marion but uh, they're behind schedule yeah, so on we'll, construction. We'll be at Lau Park. Um, we are actually starting next week with the uh, with the International Julian Dubuque International Film Festival, where their first event. Um, so it's a big show um, at the Five Flags Center. Five Flag Center in Dubuque. That's going to be a great event. And then Thursday night we're at, at the Ainsworth Opera House, where it all began. began. I mean, Frank Brinton sh showed movies at the Ainsworth Opera House. It, yeah, you know. Um, and then we're at the Burlington Capitol Theater next week as well. But the best thing to do is take a look at our schedule at www.redcedar.org or watch the paper. Um, look at our website. Um, but because everything's in there, and there are there are ticketed events and there are free events, we're actually live streaming from the Cedar Rapids Public Library. That's Wednesday, April twenty seventh at noon, and then our final two shows are at the Olympic South Side Theater. That's a new venue in, for new, us. New bow, new we were there for recently us. for a fundraiser, and uh, we're excited about the acoustics there. And then um, that's Friday, May thirteenth, and then. On Sunday, we're playing the May film, film scene at the Chauncey. We're playing their big theater, um, and of course, the, the you know Andrew Sherburn works at the film scene, and he was one of the filmmakers that made the documentary about Michael Zoss. So it's a it's a full schedule, and it's a, it's a it's a high tech oriented show. So <laughs> I've got a lot more equipment than I ever thought I was gonna have, <laughs> as if the pandemic didn't do me <laughs> do me good for that. Britain's Surprise is the third in the Britain series of concerts with Red Cedar, but a lot of new material. A lot of new material. Three new commissions. So even if you've seen it before, you haven't seen a lot of what you're going to see. And if you've never seen it before, it's it's all new. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the uh, early, early days of filmmaking, just as it, just as it was. <laughs> uh, and again, you have a lot of different uh, appearances uh, all around. So if people want details, they should just visit your website, which is? www.redcedar.org. Well, thanks so much for coming in. This is, I've always loved hearing about this project and, uh, and seeing, uh, like everybody else, just seeing those yeah. early, early films and getting to hear you all play. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always a treat. And I'm glad that you've continued to mine this because I think there's a lot there. Well, it's a great, great Iowa story. And Michael Zaz is a, is a real hero. Um, and it, it just can't 
it can't get any better than it couldn't have happened anywhere else. Again, redcedar.org for the full schedule of appearances. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.